Hello everyone, once again welcome to my OIT channel. Today I came with an information regarding OIT writing. So it is a general idea how to improve your letter writing skill. So first of all, you have to be aware of all about the updates in 2023. Actually, since 2021 April, we have some updates uh, regarding OIT writing. Until now, they didn't change anything. They are continuing. And if you want to know about all those updates, I will uh, keep it in the description box. You can find out. I can, you can write and keep it in your mind whenever you will write your OIT letter. From the date until you are sincerely there are many changes or many updates came in OIT writing. So you have to be aware about all these updates because some of the connectives they have removed, some they have introduced and uh, some commas, even in commas, um, like there are many uh, updates are there. So each and everything have to be noted out. So that is the first thing. And um, I will start with the, uh, start with the, um, the date format. Uh, before how we had many formats like we used to use the commas um, after the month we used uh, to write with the hyphen uh, even with the slash bar everything but now we have only one format example if i'm telling it's like 21 december 1928 uh, so this is a one date format if you're writing the month the first letter of the month have to be caps lock okay there is no comma no hyphen no bar slash or anything then if you are coming to the address you have to write um uh, the reader's complete name and the designation complete address and sometimes there will not be the name example general practitioner or family doctor if there is no name you will just write the general practitioner you have to use the article the um family doctor or the doctor the physician the consultant like that if example if they have given the name then when you are writing the position no need to use the article okay if there is name then if you come to down like dear doctor or dear um like sir or madam or dear the name uh we used to keep comma there it's, it's like up to you there are option option if you keep comma there after you are sincerely or uh, you are faithfully you have to keep comma if you didn't keep here, there is no need for uh, keep the comma at the end. That is the thing. Then if you come to the introduction and related to the age, when you write the age, there are different format before, but now we can use. It is easy way I will tell you. After writing the name, you can recall, keep comma and aged 78, aged 58. Again, no need to write years. Okay, aged 58 years. Actually, no need. Aged 58, that's enough. But in case you have patient is baby, like uh, the age is in weeks or days, you have to mention like aged 6 weeks, aged 5 days. These things and all, you have to write. Then if you come to the introduction, um, you will have many challenges when you are writing the introduction. There are different types of uh, case notes. Sometimes you may get one case, I mean one with the one diagnosis, sometimes it was a uh, like a uh, old um, case um but until now it's there but it's exaggerated today and you are writing uh, like a reference letter or emergency letter so something like that you, you may have uh, in case if you got like this condition that means the patient already has had his condition for many so many years since many years and now it's got exaggerated means you have to uh, use the term he you could not try it like he's diagnosed because it's not a new case you can just try it like exacerbated he has exacerbation of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or he has it is better to use has okay currently he has the condition that's that's easy way uh, don't use the term diagnosed because it's not a new one okay sometimes you may get two condition that's new conditions so you can use has been diagnosed. It's okay, fine. Sometimes you will have associated things like alopecia and depression. So these are both are interrelated condition because of one it happens. So it's like you can use associated with or secondary to you can use. Okay. Then uh, maybe you will have um, new condition as I told you can write has been diagnosed with. Sometimes you may have the surgical name, uh, the patient is recovering from total hip replacement surgery. So you can write he is recovering from uh, uh, total hip replacement surgery, something like that. 
um, then uh, recuperating so I'm used to write with recuperating recuperating from recuperating after these things and all. after and from you can use as your wish it's okay fine no problem then if you are coming to uh, the present medical paragraph that is the important thing I want to tell you the importance of present medical paragraph most of the students lose B score or C plus only because of the present medical paragraph because now the we have peculiar case notes if you see um, the um, like introspection of our recent exam questions you could see that all most of all letters are in the same format so where everywhere there will be problem with the present medical paragraph every students they used to write simply as it is given in the case note but what i am recommending you to go through the case note very clearly get the information segregate the data and write in your own words that means in an organized manner okay the reader who is evaluating your letter imagine that he or she doesn't have any idea about the patient from your case from your letter he has to or she has to get the idea of the uh, patient so that is the thing you have to keep it in your mind you should not think that the reader knows everything because that, that they are the evaluator but just be practical example if you are if you are working in a nursing home and if you are sending the patient to the hospital and if you are writing one rough letter the doctor who is receiving the patient in the hospital they don't have any idea about this patient right it's not a known case so you have to mention it's like clearly but it should be like a uh, organized manner and it's like a concise manner because our letter should be in bit between 180 to 200 words maximum to 200 it's accepted but in case of small letter it should not go below uh, 175 okay so the letter count should be in a in a appropriate uh, number so how we can start the um, uh, like present medical paragraph always think whether this condition is already present in the past even if, if if it is present in the past start directly like this person example patient's name is johnson mr johnson has had this condition for these many years and is on this medication that's enough that's it will give a clear idea about the patient and the remaining thing you can ex you can explain recently but you don't forget to write the term recently if you are using the connective which will give more impression more expression to your letter okay we are not writing simply the connectives connectives have more uh, meanings it's just like um, make your letter alive that like it, it will give you a clear picture about your patient so my maximum try to use the connectives appropriately i'm not telling that in every sentence there should be connective but uh, like you can use it as as it's a flow so you can use um recently then what happened so the reader can understand that okay this patient has had this problem for many years and he was on this medication and recently these many things it's happened and today this is the condition so that's enough for them to get a, a, a clear idea but simply if you wrote uh, sometimes what what is the main main mistake what you used to do is simply you will write everything what all things it's happened today this many things it's happened and in social paragraph you will come you will write about this condition okay patient has had this condition for many years so after reading all these when the reader will come to social paragraph he will or she will come to know that this is the thing this is a habit another one more thing important thing i have to tell you that in present medical paragraph always try to write two present medical paragraph okay you can split it into two the content can be organized in such a way that the reader can understand very clearly what you want to uh, convey to them example if they have given one hospitalization and home visit all hospitalization records you can write in the i mean in the first uh, present medical paragraph and regarding how home visit you can write it in the second and example if you want to write every details which has happened during home visits all home visits you can write in the one paragraph and today's data you can write in the second present medical paragraph and example something if it has happened during hospitalization nothing else you have to write so how we can segregate uh, the hospitalization that regarding the admission investigations um and uh, the diagnosis until then you can write it in the in the first uh, present medical then regarding the management and current condition you can write it in the second it's up to you you can just segregate organize and plan uh, until where you have to write it in one paragraph and the next so you have to think only one thing whether the reader is able to understand uh, what you want to convey okay it should be clearly and at the end 
you have to conclude what is the current status of the patient that is an important thing nobody used to write that how we can write however or even though or therefore something you can use the connective you can use like this and you can write example simple way I can tell you however further attention from your service is essential for his or her well-being that is a simple thing you can use it for every reader especially for the doctors okay so that is the present medical paragraph and regarding the social paragraph i used to see that many students they used to split social paragraph into two one medical and one uh, social actually it's not allowed in oet you have to write it in the same paragraph but you can segregate the data i always prefer to write personal history first then medical history but it in the same paragraph uh, and regarding the medications if it is clearly mentioned that you have to mention the um, medications name you can write it and it's purely according to the reader if you have non-medical readers no need to write uh, the medications but if it's a medical reader like nurses or doctors you have to mention all the medications and current medication always try to write it in the like something like new day added medications please try to write it in the either in the present medical paragraph or in the recommendation paragraph not in the social in the social means it's like a usual medication okay and regarding the allergies everything you can mention there something if it is like normal if they have given no need to write except in some case notes example if you want to write regarding asthma the case uh, the main condition is asthma but you can uh, include this allergic status in social paragraph if it is given like a patient is not allergic to any um, like irritants or something like that because asthma is related to allergy. So if there is no uh, allergic history means that one you can include because it is related to your condition otherwise non it. Regarding the recommendation paragraph nowadays we are getting many letters um, uh, for doctors like um, a specialist or non GP. In such scenario, you will not have any recommendation to write it in the recommendation paragraph. So what you have to do, I will give you one simple sentence. You can write it for all doctors. Okay. So it would be appreciated if you could take over the case of Mr. or Miss. You can write complete name, not complete name. I mean the surname to evaluate his or her condition and provide specialized intervention as you feel appropriate okay and if they have given any recommendation you can write as a continuation so this is a simple way and if it is for the nurses or for any other readers of course there will be many recommendations so what you have to do please make lengthy sentences okay you can connect two or three recommendations together by using as well as an and and then you can make a lengthy sentence which will give give a nice expression uh, while reading the uh, recommendation paragraph instead writing simple simple sentence what is thing means you will use many connectives so it will not be good like it would be appreciated then kindly please then it is important it is essential so many connectives you will use and the presentation will not be good so you can use one connective and you can uh, add two or three recommendations together okay and in case of surgical uh, letters please try to write the dressing medication everything in the starting itself and uh, uh, like uh, appointment you can write in the last always appointment should be in the last so that's only the thing and you are sincerely and faithfully if the reader's name is given always try to write you are sincerely if it is not given faithfully don't write simply nurse okay it should be registered nurse or community health nurse psychiatric nurse or something like that if nothing has given if it is not clear that which type of nurse specialist means we can simply write registered nurse and r and n should be caps lock this is the overall idea about the letter writing so please try to uh, use this information while you are writing the letter so it will be beautiful okay we will see you with another one informative video until then bye take care